Okay, so we're recording. So I did the um, evens in the uh, video. So let me do the um, odds with you guys. And of course, if you have questions about the evens I discussed in the video, please let me know. So what you should have gotten for number one is um, another row of dots, a fifth row of dots, where you repeat the previous diagram and then you add another row of dots. You're adding five more dots. That's all. So just following the patterns, because pattern recognition is a big part of math, especially in geometry. Um, here, it looks like they add an extra square and also they shade an extra square. So my guess is, uh, and your um, the new square you add is not shaded. So you're probably gonna do something like this. And then we're gonna shade all of them except for the one we added, which is the top right. So we'll shade this one, we'll shade this one, we'll shade this one, we'll shade this one, we'll shade that one. So again, pattern recognition. And if mine for number five, uh, it looks like, I actually do need to scroll down. There we go. It looks like they put the ball in each of the corners. So we've done this corner, that corner, that corner, that corner. This corner has not been done yet. So that's where I'll, um, I'll place it. And I'll just put a little ball right there, like that. So questions about one, three, five or two, four, which I did in the video. Nope. Okay, we'll keep moving. Oh, question, Derek. Yes, go ahead. I mean, so guys, I was um I was talking about the I was talking about the um the other the one that's due tomorrow. Oh, the uh, homework number three worksheet. Yeah, I was yeah I was just asking, do we do the odds like the whole thing? Oh, you do. Oh, I'm sorry, you do the whole thing. Okay. The whole thing. Yeah, actually, let me specify that because um, that's the, I was I was a bit vague. Yeah, if, if I don't specify, the assumption is the whole thing. But let me, yeah, let me specify that. So that's a good question. There we go. Um, this uh, this uh, this is another um, one question. Yeah, for um, you. For the Google Forms, do we do we have to do that last question, or you didn't want us to do that last question for the no, Google Forms? You, you, no, you got to do everything. Oh, okay. Because I actually, because I okay, because I was kind of confused there, so I mm -hmm. actually put like question marks and stuff because I didn't know whether or not we were supposed to do it. It's for the last one. You can, was, you, can you can resubmit it, and I'll look at your most recent submission. Okay. Because because it's so, always time stamped every time you submit. Right, so I don't have to do like the other questions. That last one, not necessarily. Yeah, because I'll look at your other submissions. Yeah, it's fine. You could probably just say like, uh, if, when you do it over again, I mean, obviously put your name, so I know who you are. And yeah, you could say, well, look, you could like, you could write like, look at previous response, look at previous response, look at previous response, and the one where you actually have to give a new response, give the new response. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, good. All, all outstanding questions. Uh, yeah, so let's keep moving. Um, so again, um, the odds. So it looks like you're subtracting three every time, so that'd be 11. Here, it looks like you're dividing by two, so that'd be two here. And here, it looks like you're multiplying by negative three, so that'd be 243 right here. So hopefully you got those. And again, I did the evens in the video lesson. Any questions about uh, these patterns here? Okay, we'll keep moving. Um, when I say conjecture, that's a word that some people may not be familiar with just yet. It just means like coming up with a theory or what you think is going to happen based upon some evidence provided to you. Like the evidence provided to you in number 12 was, hey, you're multiplying a bunch of odd numbers. You start noticing that every time you multiply a bunch of odd numbers, the answer is odd. And that's true. The product of any two odd integers is odd. And here they give you other conjectures, but they're not going to be true. So you got to find a, an example to prove it false. So what I did in the video, I did number 14, the square of any integer squared. So if I took four, squared it, and square rooted it, you get root 16, which gets back to four. But if I did negative four squared, I still get root 16, which is still four. And keep in mind, when you square root a number, 
It's not plus or minus. It's just a positive answer whenever you square root a number. The only time you put plus or minus is when you're solving an equation that involves square rooting. Because in this case, then there are two possibilities that could work for x, four and negative four. So when you're solving an equation, you do put the plus or minus. If you're just evaluating, just giving um, as an operation, you're, um, you know, it's not an equation, it's not, there's no variables, just, hey, just do root 16 straight up. You're always gonna give it as a positive answer. And I explained in the video that there's something called a function where uh, for every input there's one output. Um, graphically speaking, if you were to graph square root of x, if you went to Desmos or a graphing calculator and graph root x, you're going to see that it doesn't give you this. It just gives you a top half, right? Because it has to be a function. It means it has to um, have just one output for every input. Um, so that's why um, as a, um, an expression itself, you only just give a positive answer. And that's more of a, not to say abstract, but you know something more that you'll uh, revisit in Algebra 2, the class you do after this class that you'll do next fall. But let's look at 13 and 15. Any four-sided polygon is a square. It could be a rectangle. Right? <laughs> There's your counterexample. Could be a rectangle or a rhombus or a parallelogram or a trapezoid, whatever. The average of any two consecutive even numbers is an even number. Um, uh, no, because what if you do two plus four? Divide by two. That's going to be three, right? Um, actually, it's always going to be odd. Yeah, I don't see how that's ever going to be even. Um, yeah, no, that's never going to be even. So there's a whole bunch of counterexamples you can come up with. All right, so that's a 2.1 worksheet. Uh, hopefully you're feeling good about that. Any questions about 2.1 before we move on to 2.2? Nope, okay. So 2.2 is about statements. Um, this might have been a little, this was a long video. I didn't realize when I, was, when I started getting into it, I really kind of went on the deep end a little bit. Uh, so I'm gonna do um, the ones I didn't talk about in the video. And anyone that I discussed in the video, if you have questions, please let me know. If you were kind of confused from the video. Um, here, complete the following statement. If I stay up until 3, I'm doing homework. Then, um, oh, okay, that's kind of weird. <laughs> um, then I'll feel tired. I don't know. <laughs> that's weird. I don't know. Uh, that's really open ended. I didn't quite think that one through. Uh, I mean, I didn't make this worksheet, but I didn't quite think, I didn't, I should have looked at it before I told you just to do it. <laughs> um, uh, that's just weird. I mean, you can come with your own conclusion, I guess. Um, Let's keep moving. <laughs> um, so you try. So write these as conditional statements. So you could say, if an angle, let me do a text box instead. That's gonna be easier for you guys to read. If an angle is 90 degrees, then it's a right angle. So your condition is 90 degrees, the conclusion is right angle. Here, you say if n equals nine, then n squared equals 81. There you go there. And find this one here. You could say, um, oh, let me admit Nina there. If you're touring Alcatraz and you're in California. And uh, welcome, Nina. Uh, just, just so you know, uh, we're just going over the 2.1 and 2.2 2 .2 worksheets right now, the classwork. Uh, you didn't miss too much. Um, I am recording this, just so you know. Well, um, I just transferred to my iPad. Personally. What was that? Sorry. I've, I've been here. Oh, yeah. Oh, got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Just transferred. Got it, got it, thanks. All right, so yeah, um, if you're trying Alcatraz, then you're in California. So that's how you can write that as a conditional statement. Then uh, there are different ways you can look at statements. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I sometimes confuse these two. 
if I don't teach this for a while. <laughs> um, converse just means you reverse. Inverse means you negate. Contrapause means you do both. You reverse the statements and you negate. And so what I mean by reverse or negate is that you have an original statement where you have A, that's your um, condition, or your hypothesis, we'll say. And then you have B, which is your conclusion. So basically it's like saying, if A, then B. So the converse would be just reversing the two guys. The inverse is negating each of them. And the contrapositive is doing both at the same time. And this will always be logically equivalent, the, the contrapositive. They'll always be logically equivalent to the original. So remember, I, I had that one statement in the video, like if um, you live in Sacramento, then you, you are a California resident, right? If you're a California, uh, if you're not a California resident, then you don't live in Sacramento. Assuming we're talking about Sacramento and California, right? I'm not sure there's a Sacramento other states. Um, but if you just reverse and said, well, if you um, live in California, you live in Sacramento, no, the people who live in LA or San Francisco, or if you just negate it, if you don't live in Sacramento, you don't live in California, no, you could live in Roseville or Rockland, right? There's a lot of different cities you could live in. Um, so we went through this here. So this one here, great things are large dogs. So you say, if a dog is a Great Dane, then it is large. The converse would be, if a dog is large, then it's a Great Dane. Which is not necessarily true. A lot of other large dogs, you know, they have to be great dance. Or here, if a dog is not a great Dane, then it is not large. Which is not true because uh, I mean, like a uh, um, Saint Bernard is not a great Dane, but it's large. And a contrapositive is when you um, reverse and negate. So if you're to say, let me get a text box out, easier to read. Um, if a dog is not large, then it's not a great thing. Like for example, uh, you could have like a little proof of dog, like a poodle or a Maltese or something like that, right? Uh, so for sure would not be a great game. So anyway, that's what, that's what those work. Questions about that one, about contrapositive, converse, inverse, if then statements. Okay, and then here, uh, it says you try. So this is now using geometry in these statements. So look at the diagram, is JMF and FMG. Yes, that's true. Because they form a linear pair. So for sure that will be supplementary they form a straight or straight angle. Point M is a midpoint of FH. We don't really know. Um, I mean, in order to know that, you would need to know if this segment is the same as that segment. You're not told that, or if it bisects, you're not given that information. Um, FH is perpendicular to JG. Well, we are not told that it's a, at a right angle or it's 90 degrees. So we don't know either, but there's not enough evidence. You need evidence to say these. Here I have the evidence. My evidence is that um, angle FMG, um, FMG and angle JMF form a linear pair. If I buy conditional statements, I, I said you can read as IFF, if and only if, and that's when both the converse and original are, are the same. So you can always reverse it um, and it's, it's fine. So if Mary's in theory class, she'll be in the fall play. So by conditional, it could be um, Mary 
in the fall play if and only if or actually Mary is in the theater class. That doesn't really matter because it can go both ways. If and only if is in the fall play. You can also reverse it too, it doesn't matter. So yeah, go ahead, question. Yes, Nina. Um, can you go over the for for um per, per, or perpendicular lines C D and E? The one right above it. Yeah. This one here, yeah, let's talk about that one. Okay. Oh, yeah. you, you mean um because we didn't um you didn't do that in the video. You, you mean these right here? Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I, I just I just discussed it right now. Um but I'll I'll do it again. No problem. Uh, let me actually um, undo. There we go. Oh, I think that I messed. I mixed it up with A and B and C. Got it. Got it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So no. Yeah. A B C. I, I I talked about in the video. Um, these right here uh, were true false false. Um, the reason why the first one is true is because this is the beauty about Zoom. I can always go back, <laughs> so it's not not a problem. Um, so yeah, um, again, uh, JMF, which is right here, and FMG, which is right here, they form a linear pair, meaning that they form a straight angle. And so uh, automatically, they're going to have the 180, so they make themselves turn. So that's true. So you have the evidence in the diagram. The diagram doesn't provide enough evidence for DNA, however. Because in order for M to be a midpoint, you need to know that FM equals MH. And there's no indication in the diagram that's true. You need a little marking or you, someone needs to tell you that, that M is cutting FH in half or something like that. And for them to be perpendicular, you need to know that, hey, there's a right angle here or that angle is 90 degrees. You don't know that. They didn't tell us that. There's no indication in the diagram that tells us that. So we had to say false for DNA, but we could say true for C. Um, okay, any other questions about this worksheet before I move on to the next one? Okay, let's move on to two, three. Okay, uh, yeah, I love a little sigh here. Um, two, three, I said to forget about this one. It, that just seemed weird to me. So don't worry about it. I, as I got through, it was like, uh, this is a little confusing. So th don't worry about, you have to tell the difference between deductive or inductive. I'm not going to ask that on our test. Don't worry about it. Uh, I did give, I did share a little story about um, women's soccer. Uh, I did, I have taught to um, women, young women who are on the women's soccer team, uh, Avi Dahlkemper, who's uh, actually swims at well too. She was class of 2011 at my school. And then Tierna Davidson, uh, 2016, she played for Stanford, uh, once the NCAA title. I think it's the first overall pick for the Chicago Fire. Uh, so if you follow women's soccer, um, yeah, kind of a neat little connection at my schoolhouse. Uh, both very nice, but both very different. One's very academic, one is more of a, She's had, uh, Abby has a, like a million followers on Instagram. <laughs> so um, anyway, uh, I know something like a good little slide. And I did mention my next door, my next door neighbor was the owner of the Kings. Um, and then the current owner is just kind of a, I don't know, I, I'm gonna watch my language, but um, strikes me as kind of arrogant, I'll, I'll say. Um, and the probably reason why um, I say you guys, you Kings fans, <laughs> can't make the playoffs. Uh, I think you need better ownership. Take take an example of the Warriors. They uh, seem to have it figured out. Um, anyway, this one here, this one was kind of a fun code problem. Um, and you're, it took me a while to kind of figure out, but I hope I explained it well in the video. So just kind of the logic, that's really the whole point of this, uh, that warm up. Like a, none of these digits are in the final answer. So two, three, four were out. As well as two, seven, three. So there's no two, there's no three, there's no four, there's no seven. But you could have a one, a five, a zero, a six, an eight, or a nine. Those are all possibilities. And they said that um, um, here, I, I knew that um, a six was not, well, I know a three does not work. So guarantee I know an eight and a five have to work. And then of course, um, that means if a uh, 
eight and five are working, then the six is not working because you can then say there's three. So six is out. I mean, the one works. So I definitely have one, five, and eight. And um, they say that all numbers are wrongly placed in the last statement. So five's in the last digit. So I mean, five's going to have to then be in the first or second place. But they said here that one digit is well placed. So one's in the first place. Therefore, five's in the second place. Eight's in the last place. So that's using a little logic. You know, that's, you know, just a kind of thinking more logically. Uh, and if you're still having trouble with that, that's okay. It, you'll get better with it as time passes. Uh, it's just to tell you that like, logic is something that we do a lot with, and it will get better as you get you work through problems where you have to think through steps. So here, for example, um, I did a 2.3.1 in the video, and then I did a um, part A of 2.3.2. So Rick takes chemistry, Jesse looks for Rick's lab part, so this is A, this is B, and this is B, and this is C. So if A leads to B and B leads to C, then therefore A leads to C. So um, how can I write this as a new conditional statement? You could say, if Rick takes chem, then Rick gets an A in chem. And that's using syllogism, that if A leads to B, B leads to C, then C, A leads to C. So same thing here. Um, and actually, you're probably going to start over here. This will be your first statement. This will be your second statement because this is the link between the two. So then you say if f x is greater than five, then x squared is greater than twenty, which of course is true. And then here, if the polygons regular all angles um, are congruent, and the polygons regular on all sides are congruent. Um, so in order to link that, um, I think, I guess you'd have to reverse one of them, um, which we have to be a little careful about. Um, cause of all sides of congruent doesn't mean it's, it's regular necessarily. Um, if it's regular in all the in angles in the interior of the polygon, yeah, that's that's a tricky one actually. Um, Cause I don't think you can really connect these two the more I think about it. Um, so I don't think you can write one. Because if you were to say, if all the angles in the interior are congruent, all sides are congruent, that's not true. Or that's like a rectangle. All the interior angles are congruent. Not all sides. Or if you said all the sides are congruent, all the interior angles are the same now. But for a rhombus, that's not true. Um, yeah, so I don't think you could write one for that one. I think that was a trick question. Um, yeah, and we'll just stop there for that one. Uh, I just felt that 2.3.4 was weird. Uh, I did talk about 2.3.3. And it's just, again, finding patterns. That's all it is, right? Like, hey, if you multiply it even by any other number, like two times three times six, or sorry, two times four is eight, it's always even. So it's looking for patterns, really. Uh, okay, any questions about 2.3? Okay. And then finally, we could move on to 2.4. So, uh, for this one here, I saw the warm up and I talk about postures. Postures are things you just have to assume as fact. Um, and so I, I think that I can't remember, it might have been Nina or someone else was asking, like, um, on our test um, on Thursday, um, what, you know, do you have to know terms and stuff? Like, and uh, there will be some true false questions I'll ask. And they'll, they'll definitely deal with this stuff here. And again, it is open notes. So you definitely have this um, at your disposal. Um, so and I did do some true false in the Google form, which I'll go over in just a little bit. Um, but in this case here, state the posture illustrating the diagram. Uh, I did for A and B. For C and D, what the saying is that if you have two points, then 
then a line passes. through those two points. And which one is that gonna be? That's gonna be plus the five. Uh, through any two points, there exists exactly one line. So definitely say plus the five here. And then for D, it looks like if you have a plane, then it contains three points. Which one says we have a plane? Yep, it'll be uh, postulate nine. So hopefully uh, you guys were able to get that. And then lastly, um, well, not lastly, but this last page here, uh, you're asked to um, assume, um, I mean, based on the diagram, you can assume these things, but you can't assume the things off to the right here. So the whole, Point of that is that you know you gotta be careful the way you interpret diagrams like you gotta go for what is hardcore evidence like yeah definitely you could see that all the points are on that plane p great uh definitely see hb and bhd form a line so it forms a linear pair or a straight angle um definitely see hf and bh are opposite of each other or vertical angles uh definitely see hjd are all part of one line right definitely see that ad and bf do intersect and they intersect with point h but you know, GFE, it could be collinear, but you don't know. Like they didn't draw a line through those three points. I don't know. So we can't assume that. Uh, and like those are the other ones there. And I did do 2.4.2. Um, Let's talk about 2.4.3. Let's go through these here. Um, do we know A, B, F are collinear? Here's A, here's B, there's F. They're all part of that line. That is true. E, B, D. E's right here, B's right here, D's right here. Do it. There's a little, I don't know if the line's gonna go through all those. I don't know, I'm not sure yet. So I'm gonna see if it's false. It could be, but we don't know for sure. Um, here, A, B is perpendicular to plane S. Um, yeah, you see a right angle here. Here's plane S, so that's say true. C, D is perpendicular to plane T. Here's plane T, the blue. I don't know if that forms um, a right angle, so I'm going to say false. Um, here, AF intersects BC at point B. Uh, well, yeah, duh, of course. <laughs> That's true. Can you see in plane S intersects plane T at BC? Yes. Because CBC going through both, uh, are, are contained both planes. So that's something uh, I definitely would ask on a test, something like that, where I'll give you a diagram and I'll make some statements. You have to say true or false. Um, definitely something like this will be on our test on Thursday. Um, and again, you know, you could use your notes. Um, you could use the postulates here. Uh, obviously, using a lot of common sense helps. Um, and take time pay to play, pay attention to details. Okay. <laughs> um, so this right here. This works, this is homework number three. I'm not gonna um, go over this today because it is homework. I want you guys to do this. Um, and I will uh, work, oh, the answers for the odds are there, but do everything anyway. Do the even, so do everything. So the odds are there to make sure you're, you're, you're doing okay. Uh, and I'll share the evens with you guys in class tomorrow. Um, but do everything please for this one. And if you did it already, great, awesome. And this is what you will upload to School G, the completed work here. So I'll take, and I'll um, I'll do inventory of grades by tomorrow morning. Um, I know I haven't done the grades yet, so um, yeah, because I need to do that. I need to update that soon. Give you guys some feedback. So uh, if you're behind with some of the homeworks, that's okay. Just get them in. Uh, I'm pretty lenient with homework, but um, obviously by the time we get to our next our test on Thursday, any homeworks that are, that are outstanding, I, I will have to report as zeros, um, and you'll just have to determine when you can again pretty flexible but um the later homework is the less likely i can give you full credit so i'll play it by ear um just talk to me if you're you know feeling a little behind but you know the more um you stay on top of homework you know the, the better you're gonna feel about stuff right you know the more you stay on top of things um okay so that was the class work
um, those with videos. Let's talk about the, um, the Google Forms. So again, I'll take a look at your responses at a later time. Um, you know, like how did you describe the videos? Um, and actually, let me um, just so I'm discreet with people's. Um... Okay, here we go. So here are some responses. Um, and again, your names are not attached to these. I mean, they're attached on the spreadsheet that I get to see, but um, right now the names are not. But if you do see yours, you know, great. Um, but yeah, what was the section 2.1 video about? About patterns. Um, finding conjecture, different shades, patterns, patterns, predicting stuff. Yeah, I like that. Good. Uh, what do you find easy? Oh, something else was super easy. Okay, great. Um, nothing was really difficult. Okay. Or some feels to number 15. Okay. Good. And then, um, yeah, the next number in the pattern is going to be 16, just so you know. Uh, some people gave um, more. That's fine. <laughs> uh, it's not 17. Just keep it on your We're adding three, right? Uh, if you weren't sure, that's fine. Uh, someone actually put an uh, explanation. That's fine too. Um, but yeah, six can be the next number. So this is just for me. It's for me to kind of see. Okay, are you guys getting it? You know, and it looks like the you know you guys are getting it. So that's good. All right, here uh, let me click on responses. So two point two. Uh, that was about um, if then statements. Yes. Good, conditional statements, good. You guys are getting it, great. Um, some of you guys thought it was easy, fine. Um, yeah, sometimes I uh, might have to reverse my videos. Uh, sorry if I was a little confused. By conditional, it could be a little weird. Um, so we can talk more about that uh, tomorrow if you have other questions. Um, okay. And then um, you're asked to um, write uh, the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive. So if all the angles in the polygon have 180, then it's a triangle. That is true. Um, and you said, if a triangle, um, if all angles, um, so the converse actually, if um, a polygon is a triangle, Then angles add, add to 180, which is true also. Or if you um, inverse would be if the angles don't add to 180 in a polygon, then polygon is not a triangle. And the contrapositive would be um, no triangle, no 180. I, I got a little lazy there. Um, so it looks like most of you guys got it. So, okay. Uh, Derek, go ahead. Um, yes. Um, so for for the last questions, if you don't like truly understand it and you put like a, a question mark, is that okay? Uh, that's fine. I mean, if, if, uh, sometimes if you could um, maybe just give a little more explanation of why. Um, you know, again, uh, it's all about completion. Uh, I'm not great on accuracy. Um, and actually, what it tells me is that okay, if, if you have a question, then I'll I'll come talk to you. You know, or you come talk to me, and and we'll we'll come at it through a no pun intended, but we'll come at a different angle. You know, so it's, it's just it's just for me to kind of just um, gauge how the whole class is understanding, or how specific people might be understanding it. So don't worry, don't worry if if you're a little confused, uh, but do ask questions, obviously, uh, and I'm here to help you. But yeah, okay. I, I'm not I'm not great on accuracy. Don't worry about that. Okay. And plus, I don't have the time for that. <laughs> no, but you, you need to make mistakes. Math is all about making mistakes. Um, this one here was about uh, reasoning, right? Okay. Um, some parts you found kind of easy. Um, yeah, the duck and duck part was a little weird. So don't worry about trying to understand just between those two. That was a little weird, I felt. Um, and then here, yeah, this one's a little strange. Uh, if line, um, I, you know, I, I didn't really talk about this. I'm just kind of curious to see what you would say. So line A is right here, and this will be line B. This will be line C. So if line A 
is perpendicular to line B. And then this is parallel to C, then these are going to be perpendicular as well. So you want to say um, A and C are perpendicular. That's what you want to say. Yes, they would all intersect. That is true. You can conclude that. Um, uh, but most likely you want to say B, A and C are, intersect, are uh, perpendicular. And that's okay if you didn't get it. Um, but we'll, we'll, that, that's, a, that's, I think, a, a theorem or postulate that will come down the road. Um, Derek, go ahead. Oh, no? Okay, no questions? Okay, got it. All right, and then finally, uh, two for uh, Google Form. So if we look at the responses here, uh, some of you guys, um, there's still a handful of you guys need to submit, so please do that. It's about postures and diagrams. Um, can get some of you guys thought it was easy, um, nothing too difficult, okay. In terms of diagrams can be tough, uh, I, I'd agree that that's not super easy. Um, and I do have a practice test for chapter two, which I'll give you guys tomorrow. Um, so you practice that more. Uh, and then the true false statements. Um, ooh, I like how they display this here. So the answer for this is gonna be true, false, true, false. Let me actually go to the original. Um, that'll be easier, I think. So yeah, it looks like um, handful of you guys had a little trouble with this. This is good, this is why you know, I, I do stuff like this to kind of get the formative feedback to see where you guys stand with this stuff. Uh, let me zoom out just a tad. Okay, there we go. Uh, a little more. Okie dokie. Um, and there's a point I as well. Uh, let me position this just a little bit better. Okay. So, um, points D, G, and F are colonial. Yes, they are. They're all on the line. I think everyone said true, that's good. More than one line can pass through, um, pass through what? F and H, got it. Um, Well, F and H um, is right here. Only one line can pass through any two points. I can't draw a second line. Only one line can pass through it. So that's going to be false. A plane can, can contain points I, J, I, G, and K. So I, G, and K are obviously not on the same plane right now. I mean, they're not on plan P. But I could totally contain these. I could totally draw a plane. Like that, and have I, G, and K. It's not a problem. Any three points make a point, so that's gonna be true. And then lastly, lines I, G, and D, F. I, G, and D, F. Are they perpendicular? Well, there's no indication that they are. I mean, I would need a symbol like that, or I need to know that I, G, F is 90 degrees, or I, G is, you know, a right angle. I, G, F is a right angle. I don't have that indication, so that's gonna be false for the last one. That's false. Okay. Um, that kind of takes care of. I don't know why that's still zoomed out. Oh, there we go. Just being stupid. There we go. Close these down. Okay, uh, I think that pretty much covers uh, the stuff for today, which is good. Um, so again, uh, looking at uh, the homework, uh, looks like you guys got, if you didn't finish all of it, you still got more 2.4 to watch and 2.4 Google Form, please do that. Um, but we've covered the, the first half of chapter two. So uh, we talked about it right now. You did some asynchronous stuff, but kind of guys kind of got you guys kickstarted in the morning around nine o'clock today. Um, and of course, his worksheet, um, the last worksheet, homework number three, that's what you need to 
work on today and uh, submit it through Schoology by tomorrow morning by 4, 9 a.m. Um, I still need to work out um, solutions, so I'm going to do that and upload these. Um, so that's another thing uh, that I need to get done. So I'm going to work through a bunch of stuff and scan stuff and uh, upload this afternoon. Um, I have some time to do that. Um, oh, looks like I have email. Yeah, okay, just upload. Thank you, Dan, for doing that. Um, just trying to think here for tomorrow, the plan. We kind of more the same thing. We'll be at nine o'clock. Um, I will, uh, we won't have as many topics. We only have three topics two, five, two, six, two, seven. Uh, two fives on uh, properties of algebra and using some reasoning there and connecting that to geometry. Um, 2.6 will be um, proofs. Trying to get into the beginnings of that. Two sevens, uh, proving angle pair relationships. So we're gonna, do, we're gonna start talking about two column proofs. So you have the, that to watch. And then I think there's a homework um, that goes with that, that involves proofs as well. And it'll be a chapter two test review as well. So we're gonna work through all those things uh, tomorrow. So again, uh, we'll be at nine o'clock. We won't do as long of a, um, an icebreaker um, or check-in because um, the weekend's over, <laughs> back, in, back to the grind. Um, but so we'll kind of get right into it. Uh, I'll, I'll, but I'm still gonna make videos for two, five, two, six, two, seven. Those might be a little lengthy, maybe about 15, 20 minutes each. Uh, obviously I'll have a Google form associated with them. I'll have, um, uh, I'll ask you guys to do some uh, remaining problems. The ones I didn't discuss in the video lessons, we'll do. Um, so there'll be some asynchronous stuff from 9.30 to 12 tomorrow. And again, you know, it's not gonna take the whole two and a half hours, like maybe an hour and a half. Um, and then we'll check in again at 12 o'clock tomorrow, kind of do the same thing. So we're basically the same schedule like we have today, we'll do tomorrow. Um, just to you know, Thursday, the plan for Thursday is that from 9 to 10, uh, I'm gonna do a review for our test. I'm not gonna cover any new material on Thursday. Um, so um, I'll uh, do some review for our test. Um, and I'll talk about the test also tomorrow as well. Um, so you'll kind of know what to expect. Um, and then uh, from 10 to one, you do the test. The test won't take three hours. Uh, she'll, only, she'll only take less than an hour, but uh, you, have, you can do it anywhere from 10 to one on Thursday and then be done early. So that's gonna be the plan for Thursday. So uh, it will be a very, um, and also we're driving back to San Diego. So, um, you know, so nine to 10, then I'll be on the road after that. Um, and then Friday, we'll start chapter three. That's the plan. Uh, Derek, you have a question, go ahead. Never mind, you uh, you answered it. I was just kind of confused. I was like, mm -hmm. cause I was thinking to myself, cause you always thought that Thursday and I was like, is this gonna be class Friday? But you just said something about Friday. So there is, so I answered my question. Yes, yes, we have class on Friday, yeah. That was your question? Yeah, that was my, that was my question, yeah. Yeah, got, yes. got, got, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I wish um, we'd have tests. It, it kind of would be a natural way to have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday lessons, and then Friday tests, right? Monday, Tuesday. But because we started school Thursday last week, it's a little, a little off. off. And, and then there was Juneteenth also, right? We have no school on Monday. So things are a little off center, but that's all right. We make it work. So yeah, every every fifth day we have a we have an exam. That's the plan. Um, okay, well, I don't know. I, I think I've pretty much covered everything. You guys are pretty easy class. Um, um, I do need a grade to homework, so I'll probably won't get that to, to that this afternoon, either late this evening or early tomorrow morning. Uh, I do need to make some videos for 252627, make sure those are ready by tomorrow morning. But I think the most imminent thing I want to do is um, work through these here, provide, provide the solutions. We have actual so solutions for 2 and 2 4, as well as uh, the stuff from chapter one. We make sure I have all those solutions also. So I'll make sure I work through that, scan it, um, have it uploaded uh, in the next hour. Um, I think that's it. I, I can't think of anything else. I mean, we've, we tackled everything. Um, again, if you haven't got everything done from the video lessons for today, please get wrapped that up. Um, uh, and please submit the Google form. Um, and yeah, I, I think, uh, things are moving nicely. I don't know. Uh, if, if not, you let me know. <laughs> Otherwise, um, you're free to go. Uh, we can send this a few minutes early. Um, enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Uh, if, I assume it's pretty hot there in Sacramento. Uh, it's hot here in Arizona, so I'm just staying indoors until later in the evening. We'll probably head out to the pool. 
Uh, Vivian, you have a question, go ahead. Uh, yeah, for this recorded lesson, when are you gonna post it? I'm gonna post it in the next 10, 15 minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, as, soon as, as soon as I close it, then it downloads and then I'll upload to YouTube. Usually it takes about 15, 20 minutes. So I'm doing it, I'll do it right away. And, it's, and, and by the way, I, I, it's gonna be right here. Um, let me share my screen one more time. Um, under Schoology, under semester one, there's a link that says recording some class. It'll be right there. I'll say recording from Tuesday, June, um, June 21st. So we'll be right there for you. Okay, great. Well, you're free to go. Um, I will um, stop this recording in just a bit and then download it, upload it, and then I'll also upload scans and worksheets. Okay, and Isaac, you have a question. Go ahead. Oh, uh, wait, you said if we don't finish any, like, because I have one more of the Google Forms to do. You said so, just so, 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 submit, submit, it, submit it later today if you can. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's just like homework, but that way. Okay, great. Well, enjoy the rest of the afternoon, and I will see you guys tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock on Zoom.